The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Since the Passover of the Jews was near, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. He found in the temple those who had sold oxen, sheep, and doves, as well as a money changer seated there. He made a whip out of cords and drove them out of the temple area with the sheep and the oxen and spilled the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. And to those who sold the doves, he said, take these out of here and stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples recalled the words of scripture, zeal for his house will consume me. At this, the Jews answered and said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered and said to them, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews said, this temple has been under construction for 46 years and you will raise it up in three days? But he was speaking about the temple of his body. Therefore, when he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they came to believe the scriptures and the word Jesus had spoken. While he was in Jerusalem for the feast of the Passover, many began to believe in his name when they saw the signs he was doing. But Jesus would not trust himself to them because he knew them all and did not need anyone to testify about human nature. He understood it well himself. The Gospel of the Lord. This third Sunday of Lent, is the weekend that we begin the first of three scrutinies uh, and next weekend and then the fifth Sunday of Lent. And basically, after I'm finished uh, reflecting on the Word of God, we will kneel uh, and we will take a look at our lives. Anything that's, you know, sinful or, you know, our own compulsions, our own addictions, whatever it is. Uh, But we're going to ask God to help us, to heal us. And I think that it's in a very positive light that we do this. Because if you notice, uh, the whole theme of Lent, the first weekend, uh, we, of course, talked about Noah and the flood. This is a covenant. Uh, God wants to renew the face of the earth. Uh, But yet, uh, it had grown into such decadence, such immorality, uh, that uh, something had to happen. And so we uh, talked about the flood. Then we talked about Abraham, this covenant um, God wanted to form with Abraham and Sarah. You know, they went to the Ur, the Chaldees, uh, the ancient Mesopotamia, the Tigris and Euphrates River, the cradle of civilization, this wonderful covenant. But then asked Abraham to uh, sacrifice his son. He says, I'm going to make you father of many nations. But then at the last moment, um, held his arm, the angel did. Well, today we talk about Moses, and so these strong figures uh, give us a a lot to think about, especially with relationship to uh, the covenant. Of course, Moses gave us the Ten Commandments, uh, went up Mount Sinai, Mount Horeb, and there uh, came down, and the whole relationship once again. The first three have a lot to do with our relationship with God, and that's what Lent is all about. That's what Deacon David and I have been enjoying, you know, Wednesdays and Fridays, the Stations of the Cross and Holy Mass and, of course, uh, Vespers and other devotions. Uh, But what we see here is this renewal of our lives. It's a metanoia. It's a cleansing. It's like a cathartic purgation. Um, I go around as a priest um, all over the place, help my brother priests. Um, This week I was at Newark St. Francis de Sales, my home parish, and I was with the second Uh, third, fourth, and fifth, and sixth graders uh, hearing their confessions. And uh, it just was a a joy, actually, to see them light up, uh, to be so excited uh, to make their good confession, but most of all, just to renew their lives. Then last night, I was up at Damascus near Mount Vernon, and uh, the college students, Ohio State, the Ohio State, and uh, it just was a whole retreat. They're going to be there um, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, one of the Students from Muskingum University, where I uh, am at, uh, was there also. But I knew some of the folks 
And it was just uh, really a blessing for me to be able to pray with these young men and women, uh, really taking time. And, you know, actually, this is countercultural. You know, our culture doesn't take time to listen to the inner spirit. Our culture really doesn't uh, cultivate mind, body, and soul. Our culture really doesn't uh, take time for the contemplative, uh, for the quiet, uh, for the meditation, uh, just being in the presence. And our culture looking for love, but it doesn't know how to be intimate. Uh, it's just long gone. It's a far shadow. And so I think that we have a lot to teach the culture as the leaven, as the light, and as the yeast. Uh, but we have to renew ourselves to be able to do that. In our hemisphere, uh, this is a wonderful time. Uh, you know, this season of spring is coinciding with Lent. But we also know some of our old little uh, wives' tales and uh, midrash and stories and uh, things that we talk about. You know, they have a, an adage, if March comes in like a lion, which it did, let me tell you, 60 mile an hour winds. And if you've been over any of the bridges, I've been over like seven bridges, uh, and the water is torrential. If you go out to Dillon, which is just four miles from us, uh, it's never been that high that I have seen. Uh, so it definitely came in like a lion. But what's going to happen March 31st, it's going to go out like a lamb. What, the interesting thing is that's the Easter vigil. That's when all of these folks uh, that have been preparing to be received and baptized and confirmed and received their first Holy Communion uh, will be out there with the big bonfire. Uh, all kinds of celebrations going to happen. And we have eight. Now, they'll all be at Mass tomorrow, but we're going to, in union, join with them uh, pretty much right now. And we're going to take a look at our lives as they will take a look at theirs. And we're going to just allow God to uh, come into our hearts because basically, I remember Father John Powell, he's a good Jesuit, he says, the glory of God, and he borrowed this from one of the fathers of the church, is all of us fully alive. And that's what God came to do. He came to give us hope, to give us confidence, to give us assurance. And that's really what these readings tell us today. You know, to the Jews, it seems absurd. How can there be a crucifixion? To the Greeks, it's pure foolishness. And yet St. Paul preaches Christ crucified. That's the ultimate love affair. You know, his arms reaching out to embrace from the cross. Uh, this is God's only son. This is God embracing us with the most powerful witness that he cares for us. You know, the Ten Commandments are a sign of that covenant. And we see in the reading that the deacon just shared with us, uh, Jesus cleansing the temple. You know, he was angry. And we think, oh my gosh, did he sin? Jesus never sinned. Our human emotions in themselves are not sinful. We've talked about that with Dr. Elizabeth Kubler-Ross, some of the stages of dying. But what we see is that we can turn him into sin, but that in itself, he wanted folks to know that the temple is not a place uh, of profanity. The temple is a holy place. Uh, it's not just for making money. It's not for, uh, you know, uh, all this kinds of, uh, uh, you know, you might say busyness. It's, it's for prayer. And I think that in our own lives, we also need to clear away some of the busyness. Uh, we need to allow God just to enter so fully that we allow God's message to give us a renewal, a consecrated renewal in life eternal. Let's all get down on our knees.